Approximately 2,700 years ago, there was a Hebrew man in ancient Israel who was commissioned by God to prophesy to the world concerning future events. This man's name was Isaiah. And in the Bible, Isaiah the prophet predicted that someday God would send his Savior into the world to save the people of the world from their sins. Isaiah chapter 9, 5 to 7 reads, For unto us is born, a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with just judgment and justice from that time forward, even forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So from the scriptures on a night just over 2,000 years ago, we see that this 700-year-old prophecy at that time was fulfilled in the birth of Jesus Christ. We see, first of all, that Jesus Christ came into the world as a child and as a son. In Isaiah 7.14, the same prophet Isaiah foretold, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And again, the scriptures prophesied by the prophet Micah, who was a contemporary with the prophet Isaiah in the book of Micah chapter 5 verse 2, which says, But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. After these prophecies were given, those 700 years later. It was the fullness of time, and God saw fit to fulfill his word. And he, he came down to us. He unveiled himself in flesh and was born that Christmas night in Bethlehem. We read Matthew's account on the first Christmas. Matthew 1, 18-23, where it is written. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to uh, be with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her public ex a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take you marry your wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son. And you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. On that first Christmas so many years ago, we see the Lord Jesus was born into the world for our salvation. He was born of a virgin. He was woven into human flesh as a man in Mary's womb. Yet Jesus, unlike any other man who existed up to that point, he was born without sin. All other men are born to sin because of the fall of our forefather Adam, which had been passed down from generation to generation, that sin nature has passed down, but Jesus was different. Jesus did not have a human father, but was conceived of the Holy Spirit, and such was born without a sin nature, and this is why in the Bible Jesus is called the second Adam. The first Adam brought condemnation, while the second Adam brought salvation. Jesus is not only a son of humanity, but he is also the son of the living God. Jesus has always existed as the etern eternally begotten one who comes forth from the Father. He's always been and he always continues to be and he always will be in the future. He is the second person of the Trinity with the fullness of divinity within him. When we look at the person of Jesus, 
we gaze into the face of God in the flesh. And this is why Jesus has been called the living word of God. In the Gospel of John, we see his credentials. In John 1, 1 to 5, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Aren't you glad for that this morning? Amen. And the Gospel of John continues in 1, chapter 1, 14, saying, The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. But not only did Jesus come into the world as a child and a son, but Isaiah prophesied that the government would be upon his shoulders. Isaiah continues saying that one day Jesus Christ will be ruler over the kingdoms of the earth as King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. This verse has yet to be fulfilled and looks to the time in the future when Jesus will return and he will reign over a literal, literal earthly kingdom, a geopolitical kingdom that encompasses all of the world. And that will happen at the end of all things. His name will also be called Wonderful Counselor. Jesus Christ's position as Wonderful Counselor means that those of us who know him can go to him when, whenever we uh, want to. He's always there. He's as close as the mention of his name. And he doesn't just give us ordinary counsel. He gives us wonderful counsel. Today, if you're troubled, if your heart is disturbed within you, and you need to know which way to go, you can take your bearings from the Lord Jesus Christ. He listens to your problems when you pray. He listens. He hears you. And he guides us in the right direction. Jesus, the living word of God, has given us wise counsel by the Spirit and through his written word. And his word always, always, always is the same, never changing. King David tells us in Psalm 119 and 105, your word is a lamp for my feet, a light for my path. King Solomon said in Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways to submit to him and he will make your path straight. And Jesus Christ, King of Kings, says in Matthew eleven twenty eight, Come unto me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. In the second part of John eight thirty one. Jesus also said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples, and then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. James 1.5 says, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given unto you. So we can be certain that our counsel from Jesus and from the word of God will be true and will be wise. And it will be just right for every circumstance that we face. We can be certain as he has our best interests at heart. Sometimes we wonder why we struggle so much in this life. But God understands the feelings of our weaknesses. He understands the things that, that grieve us, that weigh us down. And we can cast all of our cares upon him because he cares for us. Romans 5.8 tells us, but God demonstrates His love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's a powerful scripture. This Advent is about the love of God. Manifest in Jesus. So for those of us who have accepted the sacrificial death of Christ, his love is, sometimes it it blows our mind. And so it should. And if it stops blowing our mind, we need to refocus because the love of God is so great for those of us uh, who, who understand this. The love of God 
is so great that uh, there's no boundary for it. It's, it's higher than the highest heights. It's lower than the lowest depths. It reaches to the, the widest berth. You can't go from east to west and find the parameters of it. That's how great the love of God is for those of us that are here today. And for, for you who are listening, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, you can know him today. His love for you is great. 1 John 3, 1 says this, See what great love the Father has lavished. I like that word lavished. Lavished upon us, released with full measure. That we should be called the children of God, and that is what we are. You can come into a relationship with Jesus and become his child today. He can forgive your sin and cleanse you as whiter, whiter than the fallen snow outside. He can cleanse your heart and make you right with the Father. He's a good and effective counselor. He can help you deal with your stuff. And an, or, or an earthly counselor can only take us so far. You can go to a good counselor for advice. You can go to your pastor for advice. You can go to a professional for advice, and it can only take you so far. But the wonderful counselor can totally heal and transform your life. But it takes a willingness on our part to bow the knee of our inner person to his lordship. And when we do that, his counsel says, whatever you want me to do, God, if we have that attitude, I will do it. And when we do that, the Lord responds, I am here. I will walk beside you. I will lead you through the valleys of life. Even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you need not fear any evil, for I am with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will be with you to the very end of the age. These are promises that are given by Jesus to those of us who submit our heart to him. And we can't do that ourselves. But the Holy Spirit calls through his word today out to you to surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you do, all things will become new. Jesus is called Mighty God, Everlasting Father. John 14, 6 and 7 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him, and you have seen him. This is also an explanation of why Jesus says in verse 9 of John 14 the same. He who has seen me has seen the Father. Colossians 1.19 says the Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Hebrews 1.3 says the Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. Aren't you glad he is mighty God? Aren't you glad that we call him mighty God, everlasting Father? And finally, in addition to all these other predictions, Isaiah the prophet said that he will be called the Prince of Peace. When Jesus walked the earth, he showed us what God was like with skin on. His teachings reflected the glory of his person, the glory of heaven. He came as Savior to show how broken the people of the world war, were and how much they needed God's intervention to heal their brokenness. Jesus, the Prince of Peace to his children, says in John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. My friends, today, we can go to Jesus about anything. We can be sure that he's listening when we do. The Apostle Paul encourages us to go to the Prince of Peace with every request, with, with every request. And when we place our trust in him and we go to him with those requests, the Prince of Peace will give us his peace. That's why it says in Philippians 4, 6, and 7, do not be anxious 
about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests before God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This week, we celebrate Christmas, Christmas 2021, and everything that Christmas means. Jesus, the world's Savior, God in the flesh, was born into a world as a promised gift from the Father to all of us. Our Heavenly Father sent Jesus that first Christmas to save us from our sins. He calls us to place our trust in him today. This is the greatest Christmas story. You know, there's all kinds of stories out there. There's Santa Claus and the Grinch and all that stuff, but it doesn't, this is, this is where it's at. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life and this is the true purpose of christmas and why we celebrate out there if you're listening if you don't know the lord jesus christ as your savior god has offered him as a gift to you you can ask jesus to be your savior and he'll cleanse you from within he'll make your heart your spirit inside of you as white as snow there's innocence in Jesus. Although our sins are great and all of us are sinners, God's forgiveness is greater still. You can come to the Lord Jesus Christ today. He offers this as his gift in Christmas 2021. Would you make him your savior today and ask him to be your savior today? I trust that you will. For everyone else, Merry Christmas. I'm so glad to be part of the family of God with you. I hope that you have a wonderful week in his presence. Amen.